All right, we ask a lot of questions on this particular podcast, mm-hmm. but today we will answer the questions. It's the return of the random question generator. We don't know what to expect. <laughs> Nor do you, because <laughs> John and Nancy are still talking. <laughs> on any given day, this is the best thing on the internet. I love this idea. It is. I get a little nervous because you say I can't pass. We cannot pass. We have but to take the question. Think of an answer right off the top of my head. That's the challenge now, isn't it? <laughs> so the random question generator is just this website, basically, and it spits out questions, mm-hmm. and then it kind of, you know, it's kind of a party game sort of thing yeah. where you learn about people on based on how they answer the question. Like Nancy can't think of anything to say, so you're like going, okay. Well, that, sometimes just that you girl. know. I don't right. know. We'll see. We'll see how we do in this one today. So I think this will help. And you can't see this at home, but Nancy has donned her thinking cap. <laughs> so just for the random question generator, she's put on this enormous hat. <laughs> it's with, just my winter hat. It's a big hat. And it's got a pom-pom on it that's the size of a 16-inch <laughs> softball. <laughs> it's just this ridiculous it, it is. hat. But if it helps you think, so be it. All right. Well, let's so, hope it helps me think. The rule, rules are is we'll roll through a few of these questions here, and, uh, and you know, you can kind of answer them to yourself at home and see if you'd answer them the same way we would. Yeah. And, again, you can't pass. We're just going to fire them off, and we'll see. So here is question number one from the random question generator on John and Nancy. You're still talking. What, who, excuse me, who was your favorite teacher and why? Um, my favorite teacher was Mrs. Hudson, Miss Hudson. She was my math teacher. She was also my volleyball coach. Um, I just really liked her. And did she let me read in her class? Maybe she, I was read in high school in my classes and I would hide it with my math book. She was my math teacher. I don't know. I just, so you weren't doing math. You were reading books behind your math book. She, I think she kind of knew it. <laughs> but anyway, she was my volleyball coach too, but she was, uh, she was a great teacher, cool. a great educator. I will yeah. say with your... Miss uh, Julia Hudson, her name is. Cool. Yeah. And uh, as good as your math skills are right now, <laughs> sounds like that technique worked. <laughs> what about you? Uh, I always talk about Sally Strum. So Sally Strum was my fifth grade teacher. And Sally Strum was the first teacher that I can remember that harnessed my evil and used it for good. So as you can imagine, little John was quite a disruption often (laughs) in classes. All day, every day. Because Uh anything that came into his little mind, he said out loud. Mm -hmm. Now, it was really funny stuff. It was great material. I'm sure the class probably broke out in laughter. But rather disruptive to a class. So Sally Strom in fifth grade decided to let me do a few minutes of comedy before class. So she let you do like a stand-up comedy yes. routine yes. in class. Okay. And she said to get it out of my system, right? It, it, and, I, and it worked. Did it work? Well, it worked on two levels. One, it got it out of my system, so then I could just sit, you know, it was a kind of a tit for tat. She let me do it, so all right. You were going to behave. I could now behave. Did you? The know? other thing was, well, the other thing was is I was performing in front of an audience that was laughing, which is, that's the great, that's basically what I do, still do. Okay. And so it was training. I mean, it was really, it was kind of career training. But my question is, did you actually behave the rest of the day? Yes, it actually was a great relationship then that we had. All right. Because she, you know, you know. She could punish you by taking that away. If, exactly. If you're not going to behave right. the rest and of the day. And I loved it so right. much. So, okay. yeah, that was a very, that was pretty innovative teaching, I thought. Mm. Uh, and I'm really the only kid that I remember her doing that for. I mean. You must have been bad. You had to know that I was uh, a disruptive yeah. kid. All right, cool. Still am. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes. Question number two on the random question generator. What dumb accomplishment are you most proud of? Oh, dumb accomplishment? <laughs> you have to go first on this one. What dumb accomplishment am I most proud of? Um, So This is why I don't like random question generator. What do you mean? Random, I mean, dumb accomplishment. I'm going to, okay, you go and I'm going to think. So I will tell this story, uh, and I do on occasion. I may have already told it before on the podcast, but for a brief moment in time, I was the record holder for the President's Physical Fitness Test Shuttle Run Test. So this was where... 
This is back in the 70s. Yeah, they used we to, know what the shuttle run is. You don't need to I, Some people may it. not know. It was basically they'd put a, a, an eraser on the free throw line of a basketball court, mm-hmm. and you'd be at the baseline, and you would run out, mm-hmm. grab the eraser, run back, set the eraser down, run back out to the free throw line, and run back, get the eraser, and then go back and put it on the free throw line. So it was like this back and forth physical fitness thing. I was the record holder in that for a minute, like a day. Like a day. I did it better than anyone in the seventh grade or whatever okay. it was for, a, for about a day. And then it all switched and blah, blah, blah. But I did hold the record. That was a dumb accomplishment. But I did it. And I'm proud of it. What and was your dumbest accomplishment? You're going to rip on me because I don't know. I can't come up with a dumb accomplishment. You could probably come up with a dumb accomplishment for me. I can. Okay, what is it? Rocking that hat that you're wearing right now. <laughs> the fact that I own... Okay, yeah. The fact that I did count my hats... And I now own 26 winter hats. Amazing. Yeah. That's, o- that's only too shy of the record. I'd, get, so, I'd go yeah, shopping. So I'm probably holding some kind of record. You are. Dumb accomplishment. Definitely okay. within this pairing. Uh, All right. Question number three. When was the last time you changed your opinion about something major? <clears throat> I mean, you kind of had the opinion for a while and then you got an epiphany and you went, eh, maybe not so much. I have one just this week, actually. What is it? Well, I was, I've been thinking, you know, with this, and, and not to go political, but with all these, do, you know, classified documents showing mm-hmm. up in everybody's house, regardless yeah. of party, you yeah. know, it's like, wait, where, how does this happen? You know, right. you know, who's doing this? So in my, in my brain, I was thinking like, well, can't they just put that stuff online and then people can check it out, can check it out from their house and then, and then, and then there's a traceable yeah. thing as to who, like some other way to monitor that without Instead of having this, to having take all this paper, from right? the, yeah. Then I heard a discussion, and I was kind of of that opinion. Like these guys should just put it all online. Mm-hmm. But now, having heard about uh, having a, a cybersecurity lecture, going, look, no secret is safe on the internet. Jeez, you got to understand that if you got national secrets going so on they here, have no secrets on the internet. Well, on the I don't computer? know that they do or don't, but it's just saying that if it goes up online, if you are transferring yeah. information. Between one place to another on the internet, somebody can hack it somehow. So eh, I've kind of changed my come around on that. So maybe it should just be a library situation where the documents don't leave the premises. You Mm -hmm. have to go in and physically read in a room and leave them there and go home. Okay. I'm going to say generally mine, I don't have a specific one, but here's generally. Generally, it it probably has to do, is a political one as well. Mm -hmm. here's, Here's why I say that. You know, I think we all get caught up in the headlines right. of things. It's like, oh my, what? That, no way. That is my opinion now because of that headline. And then you do a little bit more research. <laughs> Read and, the second sentence. Yeah, and you're like, <laughs> and, but what I'm saying is you don't actually do that right away. So you're 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 operating on the headline. Yes. And then maybe down the road a little bit, you're, you do a little bit more, you know, research. Correct. You're like, okay. Uh, maybe Man. I jumped the gun there in thinking that particular opinion, and now I'm changing my I opinion. think all of us, regardless of how we lean any direction, would get along a lot better if we did not make the clickbait our opinion. Correct. So that's Correct. for sure. All right, last question. All right. It's the random question generator. Here we go. You got your thinking cap on? You know I can do. can barely see your head with that hat on there. Here we go. Last question. Who are some of your heroes? Some of my heroes. Two heroes. My husband, Bruce, because he puts up with me. Okay. He fits up with me a lot. Mm-hmm. He's very patient. Okay. <laughs> and then then he has to, so that doesn't John, count. John, because John puts up with me, too. John, both of her husbands <laughs> both of are her husbands. heroes. Because, you know, you guys deal with me every day, and you're <laughs> pretty good at dealing with me. So, <laughs> uh, I will say, well, I always, I always consider my oldest son who went through leukemia and mm-hmm. spinal taps every month for years and you know what I mean yeah. everything that happens with leukemia and cancer and chemotherapy and everything that kid to be a smiling happy adult is a hero to mm-hmm. me it's so hard to go through that and he did it with great grace yeah. and it, not without incident but still that's heroic to me I've never done anything like that right. in my life so no no way uh, and then uh, another hero of mine are I, I like people who um, are willing to speak truth to power. You know what I mean. So 
they are uh, able to to make commentary on um, on just about anything where they have a, a strong moral compass, right? Mm-hmm. So a strong moral compass. And I've always felt that the Beatles in that regard and the guys in Monty Python, those were my two like heroes of artists who speak truth to power. Okay. And uh, I always thought it was very heroic, even when it sometimes meant professional losses. Yeah. You know, money isn't everything, but the truth is, so that's cool. Okay, forget it. You're not my hero. Pink is my hero. <laughs> <laughs> I got to take you off the list. Pink. No, I'm kidding, of course. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> I accept. Ah, all right, that's okay. awesome. Well, all of you guys are heroes to us because you actually put up with us every yes, morning you. and uh, stop by the podcast, too. So just a reminder, always, if you will keep listening. We'll keep talking. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye. Pink.